Have you ever lost a power supply to your electronic device? It doesn't really matter what it is. And you're trying to source a replacement and you have a bunch in the drawer. You just have really have no idea if it's going to blow up or anything if you plug it in. So if that's you, watch this video and find out and you can learn a lot and actually save a lot of money in the meantime. So what are the aims for this video? What's going to be included? Well, we're going to talk about volts, amps, watts, everything you need to know about sourcing adapter for your electronic device. We'll teach you about electricity, but we're not going to mention anything to do with electrons or anything complicated or anything that will take your attention away. It'll be very, very basic and it's aimed at anyone who doesn't really know anything about this at all. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. So if you're anything like me, you pick up random electronic devices with no cords. You could also lose cords for your existing electronic devices. And when trying to source new ones, you may be presented with different weird patterns that you don't really understand and different shapes. For example, this one has a circle with a little positive negative and some weird thing going on there. On this router over here, it has like a figure of eight with a flat bottom. And on this Nintendo NES over here, again, another circle. What does it all mean? So we're going to use this Nintendo as an example. So you have a Nintendo, you picked it up at a yard sale. It came with no cords. You know, you want to buy some cords. So I'll tell you what 99% of people do. They go on eBay, Amazon and type in Nintendo NES power adapter. They go and buy it, take it home, it works. However, what if I could tell you that one of these in your house will actually power the Nintendo and I can guarantee that it won't blow up when you plug it in. And as well as that, I'll give you, uh, you know, lots of information on how you can apply this knowledge to pretty much any random electronic item in your house, such as this CCTV device here. So to work out if an adapter is compatible for our device, we need to pretty much understand what all this junk means on this power adapter right here. You might have some sort of indication, but there may be a couple of things you're not sure about, so stay tuned. So when sourcing a power adapter for your um, device, you know, it depends what the device is, we need to determine what is the situation of the current flow. Now, what is a current flow? Well, it could be direct current, in which the current is direct. And when I say current, let's talk about water through the pipe. Let's, let's forget current, let's forget electrons. Let's talk about water flowing through these pipes. So direct current, that's like the water flowing in one direction. And this Nintendo NES here, well, that requires AC power right there. So that's AC. The CCTV thing here is DC. And they're two different current types representing the flow of the water through these pipes. That's what AC and DC is. So if you have a DC device here, never plug an AC power adapter into here. Chances are, without knowing what's inside, you might fry it. And same again with the opposite. So if you have an AC device that requires AC, choose an AC adapter. So let's use this adapter as a reference. Always look at the output. The output of this adapter, which goes into your device, is 12 volts AC. So this is an AC adapter. If you choose this adapter here, the output here is 12 volts DC. So we know that this requires an AC input, this requires a DC input. So now you can choose the current flow for your device. Now let's talk about something else, voltage. Now talking about voltage, what is voltage? I always hear voltage everywhere. Now imagine our water pipe system here, as we have been doing. Voltage is actually the pressure of the water. So, you know, say you turn the faucet on, the water kind of dribbles out. You could say that's low voltage. If you turn the pressure on, you know, quite high, water will be gushing out. And the same applies with electrons and things like that with electricity. So always think of voltage as pressure through the pipe. So now if we're trying to source an adapter to power our CCTV box right here, we've talked about AC and DC, so we know it requires DC. But now we can see the voltage right there. It says 12 volts. Now I've found an adapter here that looks like it has the same end. It might fit. And the output of this is 12 volts. Now this little line with three dots underneath means DC. Uh, I don't know why they don't write DC, but you know, here's a term for it. Just me on that. So this output's 12 volts DC. That satisfies our circuit requirement. It's DC. And it also satisfies our voltage requirement. Perfect. 
Now what if we have this? It requires 12 volts, but this is outputting 5 volts. Chances are it probably won't even work. It might not even turn on. So what about this one here? 9.5 volts. Well, electronic devices have like a tolerance um, of what, you know, might work with the voltage. Chances are if you plug this in, it'll make like a kind of whining noise. It, it'll probably work and, you know, you might run this device for a number of years. It might be fine. However, it's not really recommended because all the components inside, you know, are expected to take on 12 volts. Without knowing all the components inside the unit and what voltage they require, you know, you could be doing it some damage, but... It really depends on the device. Um, if you have like an 11 volt supply and it requires 12, if it was me, I'd probably go for it and I think it'll be fine. But something like this a bit too low, um, maybe 9 volts might be fine. But, you know, it's recommended to go 12, you know, around that figure. Now, what about this one here? What if it's too high? Now, the same thing applies if it's a volt or too high. You know, it'll probably work. You'll probably be fine with that. But if it's like, um, if it's 12 volts and it's, you know, outputting 16 volts, for example, then, you know, the, the t if you think about ratios, what is uh, 12 of 16, you know, the ratio is quite a big jump. So I probably wouldn't risk it. Um, 13, 14, you'll probably be okay, but it's good to match up the voltage. And what if the voltage is too high? Say, you know, put a 20 volt adapter into it. It'll probably cause a lot of damage and you don't want to do that. So we've talked about the circuit type DC, we've talked about the voltage, 12 volts, we've satisfied those on our you know big box of fun adapters. Now amps, well what are amps? It doesn't even talk about amps, why do we need to care about amps? Well coming over here there's a little label here, 12 volt DC volts, 5 amps, so it requires a 5 amp input. Now what are amps? Let's talk about amps. Now, using our trusty water pipe system, amps is the size of the pipe. So, think about this one as high ampage. You know, it's quite big. You can get a lot of water flowing through here. And this would be low amps. So, you can see how skinny it is. So, low amps, high amps. So, if you have high voltage, remember voltage is pressure. So, you have high voltage coming out of here. You know, it's going to gush out. If you have the same amount of voltage, but with low amps, then it's going to seem like a water pistol. You know, this one's going to have way more power because the amperage is lower. So it's, because it's high voltage, it's going to seem like a water pistol. But the same um, voltage in this higher amp tube here, you know, it's going to dribble out more because it's, you know, it's bigger. It's not as skinny. So in terms of amps, we're talking about the size of the pipe. So when talking about amps, you might see a bit of a pattern with your uh, adapters here. You may notice that the bigger the adapter, the more amps can be drawn. It's a general rule to go by. So this one here in my hand, the output is 1.2 amps. Coming over at this bigger one here, it's 5 amp output. So you can see there is a bit of a pattern here. If you have a really old adapter using, you know, kind of more old school technology, you might find it actually, you know, this huge block. It, you can only get one amp sort of, you know, out of there. So assuming all your adapters of the same sort of age when they released, that's generally the pattern you might see. So this is like a laptop one and they require like a higher ampage sort of that so that's like a five amp supply but something really tiny like for an old nokia phone or something you'll generally notice the amps are lower now amps in terms of your devices it's a very safe measure you can't really mess up with the amps because if this requires a five amp input here and you give it two amps it just won't power on it doesn't have enough power However, if you give it 10 amps, it'll only take what it needs. So you give this a 10 amp supply here, it'll, it just needs the 5 amps, it's no big deal. You're not going to blow it or anything like that, it just, it, it's just telling you it's going to draw 5 amps from your supply. So when looking at amps, 5 is perfect. If this says 10 as an output here, it's fine, it's no problem. However, if you use 
it's underrated one, 1.5 amps, it probably won't turn on to be honest. If you use 4.5 amps, it, it might turn on, but it might be a bit sketchy. <laughs> but with amps, make it the same, if not higher on the supply. So now, circuit done, voltage done, amperage done. There is one more thing on a DC circuit, which is polarity, which we'll talk about momentarily. But before we do that, we'll just mention wattage briefly. Now, wattage. What is wattage? Does this even apply here? I don't even see any mentioning of wattage on here. You know, well, what is it? So, this is kind of what you see coming out of the pipe. So, maybe like a puddle on the floor or something. It's an indication of how much your power supply, the supply, well, to the system can generate, or how much your device consumes. So this is pretty much reflected on your energy bill and it just uses the volts and amps as a calculation to work out the wattage. So because it's like a calculation on the volts and amps, a lot of things might not even say that. They'll just give you the voltage and the required amperage and you know you're good to go really when sourcing a supply. However, if some do mention wattage, you can actually work it out. It's a, you know, a very simple equation. And you can see right there, very simple. So watts equals volts times amps. If it's 12 volts, 5 amps, you know what the wattage is. Very easy, right? So if we look at this supply here, you can actually see it mentions watts right there, 25 watts. Now when it mentions watts on a power supply such as this one, it's actually telling you a rating of the maximum power that can be drawn from it. Now if this came with your laptop for example i don't know so it says 25 watts here and your laptop for example might require 20 watts well that that's fine it's just telling you the maximum amount of power that can be pulled that's it your device will almost certainly be lower than that it's just an indication so just so we understand the wattage thing here again wattage it's like an indication of the power being used based on the volts and the amps Say you want to fill a pint glass. Everyone knows what a pint glass is, for example. Now, imagine this is like a water pistol. You know, it's narrow, it's skinny, for example. So this, because it's quite small, it would be high voltage. So say the pressure's quite high in a water pistol, but the pipe is small, so it squirts out quite fast. Now, a large sewer pipe, you know, slowly pouring into the sewer, low voltage, but you know, because it's quite wide, it's high amps. But because this one's squirting out fast and this one's pouring out, they actually fill the glass at the same time in our example. The pint glass fills exactly the same amount of time. And that's two ways of doing something. So high amps, low volts, high volts, low amps. But they fill the glass with the water, you know, electrons going through it, that's the water, the same amount of time. So we could say both of these are 35 watts, they're just achieving it differently with a different mixture of voltage and amps. So that's what watts are. Okay, so we've talked about volts, we've talked about circuits, amps, watts, all that good stuff. But one more thing, very important, is polarity. And that's especially important in DC circuits such as this one. That is something that could easily blow your electronic device, so it's very important. What is polarity? Sounds very complicated, doesn't it? Well, polarity is the direction in which the water flows through the pipe, from right to left, or left to right. <laughs> That's what polarity is. It's the direction of the current through the circuit, so the direction of the water through the pipe. Why is that important? Well, in DC devices such as this one, 12 volts DC, it actually tells you at the bottom here, in a very confusing way, what the expected polarity is. Now I will make sense of these here. Now this is a AA battery, because this is a basic guide, we're using an Amazon Basics battery, keep it all simple. Now polarity in a DC circuit, so remember DC, in a DC circuit, the current flows in one direction. So the water flows in one direction only. All the time, depending on the circuit, 
the designer of the electronic item pretty much chooses which way they want the current to flow, you know, which way the water goes. So here's an example. Let's say it goes from positive to negative. So the water direction or the electron direction would go this way. Pretend this is the light bulb. It goes from positive to the light bulb. Inside this light bulb, it, it, it expects this direction. It knows what the direction is supposed to be. So it goes this way. If you start sending it this way, this light bulb is like, hey, I, I didn't expect this direction. I'm just going to fry myself and blow up. That's pretty much what happens inside your devices. Polarity is sort of expected. Now, without making things too complicated, they can actually protect themselves. Sometimes the polarity doesn't matter. However, you should read the instruction manual because usually it is. But they can install devices in here to actually protect themselves from reverse polarity or water going the wrong way. So this is very important, especially in DC circuits. So here's a power adapter right here. If you look down here, have you ever wondered why there's a little, you know, tip inside of there? Wow, it's very simple. This is where polarity ties into things. Now, if something is a negative polarity, it has a negative center or a negative tip. So that little dot inside there is negative. And the outer sleeve here, which is this metal bit here, is positive. And that's why there's a little bit of plastic here separating the two, so they don't short out. Alternatively, if this is positive polarity, then it's the opposite, for example. So positive polarity will have a positive little dot in there, and this outer metal sleeve here will be the opposite. That's pretty much how polarity works. So looking at this adapter here, you can see there's two little wires going all the way to the end. Exactly the same thing. One of these wires will leave, lead to the outer sleeve here, that silver outer sleeve. And the other wire, the second one there, will lead to the tip, right down there. So polarity is represented by this little symbol here. You can see the plus goes inside the circle, and that's saying the tip, or center, is positive. So when the positive is in the middle, just like that, positive tip, it's positive polarity. So the polarity depends on the little dot inside the big circle. <laughs> Pretty much it. It's not that hard. So again, this one. Let's look at this one. Positive inside, positive tip, positive polarity. Let's look at our device. Positive inside. Why are they backwards? Who knows, but it's positive polarity. As long as that positive is inside the negative there, as a little dot, Positive polarity. And what you will actually find if you have a big box of adapters like this is that generally most adapters are positive polarity. It's almost like a standard of sorts, but if you look at older devices, you may find a negative polarity one, just like this one here. And this is an old adapter, and you can see it's negative polarity there. So, you can be tricked out by this, so do pay attention to the polarity. Now, I don't want to get too carried away, but if you're familiar with a multimeter, then you can actually test the voltage and polarity of the, your chargers. Because what happens is, a lot of these adapters might not even say the polarity on them. So, you know, how do I work out the polarity? You know, I need to know this. Yes, you do. And sometimes they don't mention it, so that's very important. So what you can do is put one probe in the middle and one on the outside and you can see it's a 12 volt supply however if you put these probes in the same orientation on an adapter where you know the polarity it will say something like this so say this is positive polarity i have the red one in the middle black on the outside positive polarity positive 12 volts now if you test this on an adapter where you don't know the polarity Make sure your red one's on the inside and the black is on the outside. And it actually says negative 12 instead of plus 12. Then we know the polarity is different. So this one's positive 12, so it's positive polarity. We test an adapter that doesn't say the polarity on it, and it says negative 12. 
we know it's negative polarity. So that's actually how you can check the polarity on an adapter when it doesn't actually mention the polarity on it. And one last thing, if you do have a really old device and it's you know requiring requiring negative polarity and you just don't have any adapters with negative polarity, well if you have a positive polarity adapter like this one, you can actually just cut that in half right down there, snip it in half and reverse the wires. So cut, switch around, solder back in, all of a sudden you've ha you have yourself a different polarity charger. It's that simple. So that's how you reverse the polarity on a charger, cut it, switch it round, all of a sudden this is the opposite polarity as, as the pin inside. Very easy. That's all I'm going to talk about polarity. So if you have a DC device like this, we've pretty much covered everything you need to know to source an adapter. So we know it's a DC circuit, we know it's 12 volts, we know right here it's positive polarity, and it requires a 5 amp input. You can be on your way powering this with no fear of it blowing up in your face. If you want to stick around, we can talk briefly about AC devices. So if you're familiar with a classic NES, Nintendo here, really good console, came out in the 1980s. If you zoom in on the label here, you'll actually see it requires an AC input on this one. So you can see AC 9 volts. What's going on there? So to learn about why this requires an AC input and not a DC one like most other things, let's go back to the water pipes. So it's easy to talk about AC now we've discussed polarity. It'll sort of be more in your head and you're more familiar with the terms. Now AC, it comes out of the outlets in our house. There's, you know, two little prongs in America. And, and in places like the UK, they have a third ground tip right there. So what is AC? You know, why do we have it now? AC is great for long distances. If you see the power pylons outside your window, they carry AC power multiple hundreds of miles, and then that goes into homes to your outlets in the wall. So things that require AC power, generally things like fridges, heaters, motors, microwaves, kettles, pretty much large power-hungry objects run on AC power. Things that run on DC power, phones, inside of a computer for example, laptops, even this multimeter, pretty much anything with a AA or a AAA battery, even a 9 volt battery, smoke alarms, so many things run on DC power. So why is it that not everything is DC and why is not everything AC? Why do we have this mismatch of different, you know, water pipe systems? Well, they have their advantages. DC is actually really energy efficient, and AC is, you know, good for traveling multiple thousands of miles. They just have different benefits about them, and that's why they're sort of in our world today and both being used. Now, let's talk about these hertz and this input here. So, AC voltage comes in. This is like a laptop adapter here. It can work all around the world. Therefore, it requires an, a very flexible input voltage. So you can put anywhere from 100 voltage in t up to 240 volts. Why did countries have different voltages? Well, different standards happen. People couldn't agree. They all have their own voltages. So you'll notice a pattern if the adapter is quite big like this. It'll handle a bigger range of input voltage and whatnot. This is a smaller adapter. You can see it only actually handles 100 and 100 to 120. So that's generally a pattern you'll see because this has more components to, you know, handle this range of voltage here. But what are these hertz, you know, what's going on here? So to understand that, what a hertz is, let's go back to our water pipes again. So when we talked about polarity before, I did mention it, but let's make it clear. In a DC circuit, it travels in one direction only. If it's positive polarity, the water goes that way. If it's negative polarity, the water goes that way. So in a DC circuit, you only have one polarity in a circuit. It'll either be left or right, positive or negative. In an AC circuit, now this is where it gets really weird. Actually, the polarity changes. 
and it changes multiple times a second. So it's actually quite confusing. So what happens here, imagine shaking a beaker of water or something. That's really how AC works. It changes the polarity multiple times a second. And the changing of the polarity is called a cycle. So it goes, say the water goes this way, and then this way, and as it turns around, that's called one cycle. So this way, this way, that's one cycle. And it does this, in the United States, 60 times per second. That's 60 cycles. Positive, negative, one cycle. Positive, negative, two cycles. Positive, negative, three cycles. 60 times one second. So one hertz is one cycle. And for our friends over in Europe, this happens 50 times a second. So 50 hertz. In the US, 60 hertz. Other countries, perhaps something different. So if you're familiar with like an oscilloscope or, you know, those little boxes you, you see in movies when people are working on electronic things, you see this graph doing like a sine wave like this. Well, they're pretty much measuring alternate current because I told you it changes 60 times per second in the United States, 60 cycles. That's what that graph represents. Positive to negative to positive to negative. They're just measuring an AC current. If you've ever seen that, that that's sort of what's going on there. And if you haven't guessed already, in a DC circuit, because it's only one polarity on that same little instrument, the oscilloscope, you'll just see a straight line. That's it. <laughs> because current only flows in one direction in a DC circuit. So AC, positive, negative, positive, negative. DC, always one direction, left or right, positive or negative. So as you may have guessed, polarity doesn't really that matter that much in the AC circuit as far as we're concerned with our example anyway, because the water flows changes direction 60 times in one second in the United States, for example, it doesn't really matter. So for example, have you ever wondered why you can actually insert these into an outlet in any direction, like this way, it can go in this way, your devices still power on and work just fine. That's because the polarity doesn't matter. But do remember in a DC circuit it does matter. So AC no, DC yes. So what you'll find is most adapters, for example, they'll actually almost 99.9% .9 output DC. This will be a pattern you'll start seeing. But you can be caught out with this, and you do not want to let that happen. If this says output 14 AC, for example, do not use it in a DC circuit. It's very rare, so you can get tripped out. So this is very important when looking at the output. Do make sure it's DC. So now we know what a hertz is and how hertz work and how they're really sort of applicable to AC circuits. You'll see the input to all these adapters talks about AC because they plug into our house where the outlets run on AC and then they get converted to DC. So when it talks about the input here, which is our alternate current coming in, we get a little hertz measurement right here, which is 60 hertz. So we know that this is probably a United States adapter, as you can pretty much tell by the prongs on the end here. But when these prongs start looking a bit funny, maybe there's three of them or they're slanted, chances are it's probably from another country, but that's the first indication. But the second indication is a reading of the hertz. If you look at a laptop power supply here, which you can use all over the world, you can actually see they're rated, the input there is rated for 50 or 60 hertz, which is a good indication this will probably work uh, worldwide. So the question is, can you mix 50 and 60 hertz together? Now some people say it's okay to do. However, with DC circuits, I do recommend matching up the hertz to your, uh, to your country, for example, especially where the output is concerned here. Now, with AC devices, we talked about refrigerators, motors, all that stuff run on AC power. So if you, for example, have a motor or a fan, let's imagine a house fan. If you have a house fan that runs on 60 hertz, you take it to Europe and you plug it into a 50 hertz supply. What you will find is your fan actually spins slower. It will work, but it will actually spin slower. 
if you bring um, a European fan to America and it expects 50 but you give it 60, you'll find it spins faster. <laughs> is this safe? Well, it depends on the motor, how good it is, but if a motor's designed to run at 50 hertz and you give it 60, you can imagine the life expectancy would be a little lower. And sometimes they're quite easy to spot, but like I say, do pay attention. The standard one will be called AC-DC adapter. So your input is AC, that's your socket in the wall, AC, we've talked about it, and it outputs DC. That's an AC to DC adapter. Sometimes they're just called AC adapters, but you know, it's still outputting DC, the input is uh, AC. And with our fun one here, uh, this is input um, AC and output AC. But usually when you have an AC-AC adapter, which is what this is, it usually just changes the voltage here. So input is 120, but the output's only 12 volts AC. So the purpose of this is pretty much just changing the voltage. So a good indication of how rare these AC-AC adapters are is I have one in this whole drawer of adapters. So looking at pretty much any adapter now, you should be an instant professional and know what all this stuff means. You know what the input is, you know what all these symbols mean and everything. And that is the point of this video. So now what you can do is when you see a big bucket of adapters like this at a yard sale or a thrift store, you can choose exactly what you need for your device at home. So we're going to put your knowledge to the test. We've gone through everything you need to know about sourcing adapters for your electronic devices. I will cover a couple more things at the end as a bonus, but let's see if we can locate some adapters for these devices here. Let's start with this AC device right here. This is a PlayStation 1, might look quite similar. Now PlayStation 1, it actually has an internal power supply. And what that does, it has DC circuits inside. How do I know this? I read the manual. But for what you need to know, it takes AC in, which looks like that. And if you come over here, 120 volts, we know 60 hertz is in the US, or countries supporting 60 hertz, and it uses 10 watts of power. So for something like this, an AC, it'll be a supply like this. It's just a cable with no box or anything on it, because your house provides AC. So really this wire is just joining your house outlet to this PlayStation. Very simple one. The same applies for this router here. Exactly the same thing. Our CCTV box here, now this is DC because it says DC, it needs to be 12 volts. And also the polarity, as you can see the positive is in the middle, so it requires a positive polarity AC adapter. And it needs to be 5 amps or higher. So it could be 10 amps, it could be 8 amps, it doesn't matter, that's just how many amps it's going to draw. Very simple. So this one, perfect. Now. Something a little bit more complicated. This is a DC device, you can see here, there's the uh, logo for DC, the three dots under the line. Five volts, it needs to be at least three amps because it requires three amps of power. But where's the polarity? Why doesn't it mention polarity? We know that if we give it the wrong polarity and it's positive and we give it negative, it's gonna blow up, but why doesn't it actually say? Now this is where you might have to do a little bit of research. Do not guess this. Chances are, yes, it probably is positive polarity, but we cannot make that assumption because you may fry this and there may not be protective things in here in order to, you know, save you if you actually accidentally give it the wrong polarity. So what you do in this case, take the model number and try and find an official charger online for it. This is the official charger. You can look on eBay, Google Images, and a lot of the time if you zoom in, you can actually see the polarity here. You see positive polarity right there. So using a little bit of research, even though it doesn't say on here itself, we can find out the polarity, and that is important. And our last one here, this is the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now this is a very unique case, it's from the 80s. It looks somewhat like a DC input, but it actually says AC adapter. And on here, it's 850 milliamps, which is 0.85 amps, so it's less than one amp. So we need to give it at least that many amps. It needs to be 9 volt, but it's an AC adapter. It says AC adapter only. But I will tell you a little secret about this Nintendo, is that you can actually give it DC. 
How do I know that? I read the manual <laughs> because it doesn't tell you. But this is a very, very clever device and this is why I'm using this one as an example here. Now the Nintendo, specifically the Nintendo, I can't think of any other devices right now, it's quite unique because what happens is the AC input that goes into here goes something goes through something called a rectifier and that converts it to DC internally so all the circuits inside you know use DC and whatnot however it's actually harmless to send DC through the rectifier it's just kind of redundant and won't hurt anything so you can actually give this a DC adapter even though it does say AC only but th this is just something very unique to the Nintendo so really it's sort of an example is you don't really know what's going on inside these things you only have the label to go by and what research you do for example this PlayStation here uses AC power however if you're familiar with the PlayStation 2 it uses DC power and this looks like a an example uh, uh, supply for that because in the PlayStation 1 the little adapter here is inside the product itself Whereas with the PlayStation 2, to make the device smaller or, you know, cram more electronics into it to make it more powerful, it's a lot better to, you know, put that logic into a power adapter so you can save a lot of the processing power and logic for the device itself. It's just a design choice, really. But coming back to the Nintendo, following the labels, AC, 9 volts, and at least that many amps. To be on the safe side, that is exactly what you need to do. So one last thing I'll talk about is, can you convert AC to DC, DC to AC? You know, I might have an application for that, is that possible? Well, short answer, yes. To convert DC to AC, you might be familiar with something like this. If you own a car, this goes in the cigarette socket, which is DC, and it gives you AC, so you can do things like blow drying your hair and whatnot. And with things like inverters, which is what it's called, it inverts the DC to AC, it goes by wattage, so you'll find the bigger the inverter, the more watts it supports. And a little tip when buying one of these, always look at the continuous use, never the peak power. So if your device consumes 100 watts, this is perfect. If it consumes, say, 500 watts, do not buy this because its continuous use wattage is 150. So you need something a lot bit bigger and, you know, a lot more expensive. But this is uh, the process of can convert a DC to AC. It uses an inverter. I'm coming back to our trusty Nintendo here because this has a rectifier inside and the process for converting AC to DC is rectification, if I'm pronouncing that properly. And what that does, we talked about the voltage wave doing this, up, down, up, down, because it changes its polarity, you know, 60 times a second in the US. And what it does is straightens that and that's called rectification. And one of those lives inside this Nintendo right here. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is voltage conversion and step-up transformers and step-down transformers. This is particularly interesting if you travel a lot or you've moved countries, you might be somewhat familiar. We looked at this uh, AC adapter before. You can see the input here is 120, but it only outputs 12. And you could say this is like a step-down in voltage or a step down transformer because the voltage is lowered. Now, using this little cool thing as an example, if you've never lived in the UK, you're probably not familiar with uh, you know the passion for hot teas and whatnot, but this is a teas maid. What it does, <laughs> it's an alarm clock, number one, but when the alarm clock goes off in the morning, it actually brews you a cup of tea. I am not joking, that is exactly what it does. And it can actually brew you two cups because it's a double model. So what happens is you set your alarm, the tea dispenses, and you have a little jug for milk and things in the back. Now, I have never seen one of these in the United States, so I brought mine over from the UK, and you can see it uses a UK plug. And just like the American outlets, it has the two prongs at the bottom, earth, uh, sorry, earth at the top, and then the neutral and live at the bottom, very similar. It just has a third prong. Now, I can put this into a travel adapter, but I still cannot plug it into the wall here because it requires a different voltage. Let's take a look. So you can see on the label underneath it, the input voltage required is 220 to 240 volts, and 50 hertz so remember this is AC that's 50 cycles a second 
and it actually consumes 800 watts of power. What you'll notice is heat devices, uh, heaters, hair straighteners, blow dryers, all consume large amounts of wattage. And when you look at your electricity bill, and you have one of those monitors that sort of monitor the devices you use in the house, you'll notice when you have like a hot electric shower or you're using the electric oven, you know, your wattage will spike and they're the things that are really, you know, pumping out the wattage and they are very power hungry, just like this device right here. So the question is, how do I use my teas made in the United States? You know, it's, it has the wrong input voltage requirements. In order to do this, we need to use something what's called a step-up converter or a step-up transformer. And what that does is convert the voltage in the US, so 110, 120 volts, all the way up to 220, 240. That's called a step-up transformer. Similarly, if I took my PlayStation 1 made in the US to Europe, I'd have to do something pretty much the opposite. This requires 110, 120 input. But if I take that to the UK and plug it into, you know, 220, 240, it will probably fry it, almost definitely. So that is something to bear in mind. And that's when you require what's called a step-down converter or a step-down transformer. So this is what a step-up and down transformer looks like, or a voltage converter, whatever you want to call it. It's quite a big, bulk, bulky, heavy device. And looking at the back here, we can see the input voltages and also the output voltages and, uh, you know, hertz and whatnot. We've uh, talked about all of that. We know exactly what it means. However, here, rating power, 2,000 volt amps max. Now, volt amps are very similar to watts in that they're a way of measuring how much power your device consumed. And this is a maximum rating of that. So you cannot plug anything into here that exceeds this value here. And obviously we've talked about this, uh, volts times amps is watts. So it gives you a rough indication of how much power uh, this will pull. So a little demo of this. I've plugged it into the wall in the United States. We know the voltage coming out of the AC outlets is 115. So we have it set to 115. On the front here, we have a UK plug right here, which requires 220 to 240 volts. If you look underneath the T's made right here, that's the required voltage, 50 hertz. That's excellent, that's exactly what we need. We're gonna plug that in. And now we're gonna switch it on. See. Right there. So that's a 220 to 240 volt appliance working in the US using a step up and down transformer. It's very simple. And if you felt the word transformer felt familiar when I mentioned it, yes, um, AC travels on those pylons, you know, they go for miles across the countryside. And what happens is the voltage is quite high in those lines, you know, high voltage lines, you've seen the signs. And when it comes to these transformers, it steps down, it comes down, it transforms down into a lower voltage, say 120 volts for home use. And that's really how it works. So high voltage in the air comes down into these transformers, lowers the voltage and goes into homes. So that's where you may have heard it before. So I hope you find this video useful. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if it helped you. Take care.